first world problems claims chat. Which I would agree with, but I think if you're eating nuggets off the value menu at Burger King, you're maybe not quite in the first world classification of problems. I think first world problems would be like, Oh, my caviar dish only had 99 eggs instead of 100. <laughs> Ridiculous. <laughs> Counting the eggs. <laughs> Look, okay, I'm just, I'm really pissed off because I don't eat nuggets often. I was so excited to treat myself to some nuggets, but all right. Yeah, yeah. The only nugget I need is Zombie Group's cat. Ladies and gentlemen, it's game one in the winner's match for this Ting Open round of 32 North American group. Some stuff has happened to accelerate it to this point, but I do want to point out she is not playing Zerg. In the top left, we have the pink Protoss Scarlet. In the bottom right, as the cheesy red Zerg with the early pool, he is Jon Snow. It done did get scouted though, so not a bad start for Scarlet. There's there's memes to her playing Protoss for sure, but people should be aware she's actually practiced with this a fair bit. She's played in several tournaments at this point and not just a once-off versus DRG. I actually really like this. There was a couple players back in the day who would do this. They just wouldn't want to play mirror matchups, so they would have a second raise, like Maro, for example, and others. I'm, I don't know how this will go for her, but I think she's pretty comfortable knowing that even if she loses here, she can probably still beat Poke Bunny in a rematch and get it out of the group. I think her Protoss has gotten uh, better since the last time, like, uh, I think it was two WCS qualifiers ago, so the one for, like, Valencia, I want to say. Where, <laughs> she watched more Hosfods. Yeah, exactly, right? I just, it, like, it had all the, the right moves of someone who's, like, really good at Protoss, like Grandmaster Protoss, but not the moves of someone who is Protoss main race pro gamer, right? Like, there's just still some inconsistencies in, like, things that were kind of funny and weird. But I think she's, like, fixed a lot of those. And certainly she knows how to oh. deal with early pools. Ooh, the Zergling micro out of Jon Snow was so sick there, by the way. Biggest difference of that Zealot being like in the yellow versus red for round two. So quickly picks it off and hops on over to the main. Don't know there's a lot for him to really kill here with his Zerglings being so low. Probes can probably deal with this as we see Citizen's Arrest was made by this probe over here. Yeah. Um, so having to make two Zealots, not that big of a deal. Make an extra pile and she cancel, not a big deal either. Uh, definitely the most important thing about this is that she keeps her, her cool uh, and doesn't miss any steps here. She did, I guess, have to delay the next. Well, I, she chose, I suppose, to, to get uh, Stargate here. Uh, maybe a little bit later than, than possible. Because that second gas like only recently came down is what I was getting at. Where I think maybe some other bird bird respond a bit differently. But I was looking more towards like important, more important things. Like she start, did start warp gate that wasn't stalled out or canceled or just forgotten to be started, and uh, she will have oracles to help her with this upcoming all in that Jon Snow is doing. Jon Snow's just making more lanes. And that's gonna be a drop overlord. Yep. So just gonna bypass the wall entirely. It would be very nice if she saw this coming, and she is about to see it coming. The lack of drones and the natural is already a tell enough, if not the third base not being down. So hopefully she puts like even a pylon to buy time in the main base to see the Overlord potentially coming in here. She has a wall still here, but she'll need to double layer it. And maybe she didn't realize it was on the way. This is one of those things, though, like regardless of... Scarlet's wall. own skill of Protoss, like, she knows Zerg well enough that she should have known what was coming, I feel. Just, like, reading into yeah. this from her own it experiences. Is, it's like a 50-50. Maybe not that much, but it is, like, you know, there's still a oh, chance. Can this cancel warp? Oh my oh. god! And depowered the Stargate, which I think is a bigger deal. Luckily, Apollo was already put down, so that won't be stayed stalled out forever, but that Oracle's out of energy. Motion Core's only just made, but does get a decent overcharge on the Lings Oh, no pylons here. in the main. No overcharges up here whatsoever. It's going to be only the Oracle wants to get some juice to maybe hold on to this. Probes get pulled away from it. Smart move out of Scarlet, because she's just going to bleed out if she chooses to fight. Yeah. Uh, this definitely did uh, some nice damage, but still not, not enough. enough. And there's always the potential, like, fallback, you know, or the... Counterattack, rather, the Org will slide across the map and start dealing any amount of damage. Johnson really needs to kill most, if not all, the probes. Which, well, hey, there you go. There you go. <laughs> Serve to him on a silver freaking platter. Yeah, that this is now maybe enough damage. Probably enough damage. Yeah, she's down to eight workers. Uh, 32 have died in total. Ouch. GG. Jon Snow, ladies and gentlemen, takes the first game in this series. He didn't even have to use that overlord drop. 
Ah, yeah, I didn't even think about that. He just, he had it ready to go if she had been able to hold it at the front. That's true. Mm -hmm. uh, well, we'll get some subs that came in, by the way, over the last few moments. So while we get this next game up and running, I just want to shout out Flame Falcons. You know, you should get to know my friend Fart Falcon. <laughs> you guys would be making a good pair together. Uh, Flame Falcons, thank you for the two-month resub. Then Rock or Robotics? Or Rocco Robotics, excuse me, was a brand new sub. Thank you for joining us on the channel. Achilles TV was a 33-month resub. Thank you for coming back for 33 months. And then, of course, I already shouted him out, but I love the name. I just want to say it again. Frazzamatazzle. <laughs> that prime sub of goodness. But, all right. Interloper is the next map. Whoa, I just realized the text at the top of the lobby changed, too. I don't like it. Yep. Plus sign, and it's blue instead of yellow. Ah. Uh... <laughs> I don't mm. like change. I think this is a fair thing most people feel similar to. I really don't like this change, though. When, I, I think the custom lobby making was about as perfect as you can get once they fix the bugs. I don't know why they... I guess I get why they included it in a way, but they, they really need to put some quality of life things in here. Like, not going to lobbies when you were obviously on Melee before. Like, keeping that stuck on Melee would be helpful. Changing the location... Like, why does map info... I don't know, actually. Maybe, maybe it makes sense, but I don't like where the position is. <laughs> Someone who's very in the habit. From the old I know, way. it's habitual. We've done hundreds of games at this point. But okay, uh, thank you very much to Type Class. Coming in with the Twitch Prime sub as well. You guys rock in our world with that Prime sub. For the first time in a long time, we're on the upswing with subscribers. We're at 981 presently. And that slow climb back to 1,000. So thank you guys for your support. If you guys are enjoying the show, don't worry, you'll get some replay packs sent out later, but let's hop into the intro. Game number two of the best of five for the Ting Open, North American group. Guys, quick reminder, if you're living in the United States, go to bttv.ting.com. This might just save you some money monthly, which is cool, or you can use the $25 just to get something for cheap on their store. Either way, check them out over on bttv.ting.com. But kicking off game two, she has stuck with Protoss. It's the pink Protoss Scarlet. In the bottom right, going for another early pool. He is the red zerg, Jon Snow. Yeah, what I think is brilliant about these moves out of Jon Snow is that I think even experienced zerg or Protoss players have trouble with this. And not referencing Scarlet being Protoss in this instance, but rather every time Scarlet would go against stats, we would see her do these early pools. Stats still has like a record lose time on our channel for like, I think it was two minutes and 43 seconds or something weird like that, where just early lings really wrecked him up. And if someone as good as stats can follow it, surely someone as good as Scarlet can as well. The follow-up all in was just not expected, which I find surprising because that adept had gotten into the main base, but maybe because it got directly into the main base and not the natural, Maybe she'll have to throw it a second somewhere else or just hadn't been put down yet because, you know, you're droning after the early pool. Uh, perhaps she actually just, you know, had the exact wrong type of scouting. Because otherwise I thought she would have a decent one with that adept. This is going to be a little easier to wall off, though. I think it's easier to manage the, the first part of it. She managed to deal with the first sling attack fine, but it still required micro. Some ling still got in, maybe threw off a couple of things here and there. This, this is a much stronger wall, right? And these pylons doubling up here should never, you know, screw her over if one of them goes down. And unfortunately, until that second zealot comes out, there's nothing she can do about this. And those circlings are chipping away, doing a lot of damage to that top gateway. Yeah, and she is I saw also notably getting a much earlier mothership core, which hits her stargate timing. Yeah, Assuming so... Assuming she was for stargate again. Keep in mind, guys, Jon Snow did have to cut some workers to make this happen. It's not perfect, but rather than building a Sim City behind the Fallen Gateway, she goes for a Nexus. Perhaps confident that the Mothership Core alone can deal with this, much less the Zealots? Uh, pro pool certainly would help once he gets in the, the heart of the probes. Yeah, she's shooting a the micro them away. Yeah, a couple kills, though, in that gateway is certainly annoying. There's no way for Scar Scarlet to know that this isn't going to be a flood of another Zerglings here in two seconds. As Jon Snow did go back to droning. So I think she'll be a little bit on guard, but for the most part can probably read into this. Again, she's a very good Zerg player herself. Yeah, might plug that hole at the Stargate. Uh, purposely waiting, not needing two gateways necessarily. And she is perhaps risking, again, if it was that follow-up, this would just be a, you know, a bunch of dead units. Uh, sending these units across the map. 
Because if it's not the follow-up all-in, then Johnso makes lings and not drones, and that's better for her. By the way, kind thank you to Cur Daddy. Thank you for that four-month Prime sub. Says you guys are the best. Maybe I know it, but thank you for letting me know. Uh, some, some micro's got to go down. Some fancy footwork, but Johnso should actually have be fine with the units he has right here, right now. Three queens. A shout out to this drone. Got the adept kill. You are a hero among your kind. Mm-hmm. There you know, is that Stargate, by the way. So whatever regarding the uh, the Mirahan potential co-op commander announcement or whatever is uh, looming with that poster, I will say I'm pretty stoked for the drones to get these weird little, like, buzzsaws for hands. Like, straight-up Edward buzzsaw hands. They already have it in-game. Oh, is that already something that's gone live? Mm-hmm. Oh, I gotta go look into that, though, because I really like the way those look. You just have to but, add like, the code they gave us to the to your account. Okay, yeah, the, the, the like junker looking skins and stuff are pretty neat. I like it. But, yeah, um, Dares was freaking out saying that the probe looks like a dog. <laughs> He's like, it's a little dog! I know, it's got like the little jaw thing, right? Um, but hey, Pope Borg, thank you for assimilating the Pope and uh, for subbing to the channel. It's actually weird. I was watching uh, Voyager again last night. No real reason, just watching some of the episodes I remember enjoying. And it's just weird to me how much better it is than Discovery. <laughs> Oh, <laughs> that's the direction it was going to go. All right. I just can't get on board the Discovery hype chain. So people really like the, the turn it's taking. And I've watched every episode so far. I just, I don't care about the Klingon rework. I don't care about like a lot of the stuff other people care about. I just don't feel it feels like Star Trek. Nothing we has really felt like Star Trek since the new generation, the next generation. Sorry. Um, well, even Enterprise. No, wait, is it, which one is the one that, that came in 2000 something? I think it was Enterprise than the movies. Right, yeah. Even that one I didn't think was very was very well, good. So but I, it was I, Star Trek-y. I figured out, because first off, like, shout out to the Orville. Some people bring this up in chat. Yeah, the Orville is great. I actually love the Orville, and it feels more Star Trek-y than Star Trek does. But I feel like what they've done with Discovery, and I kind of, I was alluding to Mass Effect before, but I, I now realize I'm wrong, is I feel that they saw the hype that the movies got. And they're like, all right, yeah. clearly let's copy this style, because it's not the actors and the fact that it's a movie that, that's setting it apart. It's clearly the style, and that's just not the case. And that's what the series is trying to be, and that's why I don't like it. Yeah. I think a lot of people, a lot of the, the true fans, just like gatekeeping. Oh god, yeah. that's you're asking for trouble just using that phrase anywhere uh, with any context. <laughs> well, I but I kind of agree with them, even though I, I still enjoy the movies. But like this, the Star Trek is really about actually just exploring like humanity while exploring different races, whereas the movies were certainly more just about action and maybe Kirk's troubles, but very personal instead of broad and again about humanity in general so uh i don't know just different styles but really not a new star trek it's just very different but hey johnson's going for a bit of a baneling bust kind of hard to say that it's a bust but he made some well, banelings <laughs> if the attack sucks then it's definitely a bust hey <laughs> ah. uh, i wish you would have saved those though because while well, they did help take down the pylon and prevent a possible overcharge would have been good for the adepts also, who is that? Well, it's a trolley name, but you know what? Shout out nonetheless to Avi N A Villo. Thank you for the prime sub. Avi Navello. That just sounds like a Spanish soap opera or something. <laughs> That's Tela Novello Avello. Well, oh, time these big lings. Okay, she transfers out into a bunch of lings. Maybe not great. No, the Oracle Probably was into a great. spore crawler too. This this flops for Scarlet in a really bad way. It's weird. I thought she had fixed some of these problems last time I saw her play Protoss, but this is more reminiscent of what I was talking about with Valencia. Just like really odd decisions. Maybe even some like really weird Sim City, maybe in like the third game. Something like that. But uh, Jon Snow just got like a pretty good situation there. He was like in an okay position, but getting all those adepts without losing even a single drone, I think, that's bad for Scarlet. Yeah, and again, to address this, a lot of people are asking, like, why is she playing Protoss? And some people might be seeing this, like, kind of mismanaged control and be like, what a trolley move she's made by playing Protoss. I don't think that's the case. Like, as I've stated, we've actually seen Scarlet play some pretty decent Protoss, and it's not her first time trying to do this in a tournament, much less in a practice setting. Uh, so, I don't think these are throws by any means. She's just making mistakes, and Jon Snow is capitalizing on all of them. Yeah. Well, she is following up with oracles in charge, so there definitely is still room for her to, you know, come back in this game. Because it's not even really, comeback is a pretty harsh word, um, and is not nearly that bad for her. 
you know, the adepts died. Okay, so what? There was no counterattack to capitalize on it. So really, in the grand scheme of things, it's not that bad. Um, but Jon Snow should be kind of blossoming here into a beautiful butterfly as he's allowed to do um, whatever for 30 seconds to a minute. And then he has to deal with the oracles, which might still be a problem. I'm a peacock. You got to let me fly. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, he's he's pretty set to go. I think for Scarlet, uh, the Oracles are a funny choice. I really like in all seriousness. I like the charge lots underneath this. I love the idea of a lot of Oracles, but the time passed. She lost a lot of momentum from the previous attacks, and I think that if her first attack looks something kind of like what she has now, this would be a very different game. Hmm. Well, Jon Snow certainly has enough hydras to deal with the oracles, but the charge that's added in are where it gets a little bit risky. I don't know about Scarlet moving out with her charge lots, though. This is dangerous for her. She's not at the extreme number of oracles, like 20, and there aren't so many charge lots that it's insane. But actually distracting Jon Snow, I thought he actually chased the oracles farther than I thought he would. So they get 10 drone kills and then leave. Uh, Johnson didn't get two sword crawlers? It's a pretty common response to Oracles. Ooh. Well, his Hydra's responded well fast enough. Pretty common response to Hydra's is good control, too. Shots fired! No, but uh, in all honesty, like, there's there's just no wiggle room for error whatsoever. Oh, and doing yeah. things like this, rallying them forward, it, as much as I would like to make more jokes about it, it's actually a serious problem for Scarlet. I wonder how she did that. She must have re-rallied while maneuvering over there. Because generally you rally to another oracle, right? That's like the kind of the safest way to do it. Yeah. So, mm, big mistake. She has fixed it uh, since uh, that last one, the being rallied correctly. But she's not going into storm. She's just continuing to make oracles with a couple of charge out run buys. I don't mind you that Jon Snow goes for a lurker den, but I actually don't even know if he needs it. Well, I, that's what I was going to comment on, right? I actually like that he goes for it because it's a better to have it and not need it than to need it and not have it sort of thing. And I feel mm. like. You know, he's, he's shying away from the banelings, and there are people out there who do make this style work. If you guys saw Namshar versus Harstam at DreamHack Montreal, Namshar didn't make a single baneling in his entire series, and it went to the ace match, because it was all just Hydra Lurker purely and entirely. And it was against things like gross air units and what have you. Uh, so, I don't know, there's some cool there's some cool maneuvers Lurkers can certainly pull off, but they're not the go-to, and they're not popular for good reason. They work in select hey. scenarios. I think they work very well against someone who is eager to move on from Mass Oracle. And some people are more eager than others, you know, different styles. So they get these like, you know, like 20, 30 charge lots, they're on their way to Storm, but it's not quite done. And Lurkers still can like kind of deal with Storms in a way as well. That's that's when I really like, or um, sorry, Lurkers following up the Oracle harassment. But she really is just going Mass Oracles. And the amount of charge lots she has, 13, is not, it's not a low number. It's not really that scary. I think massing on Hydra's also would have done the trick. Uh, but there's also some potential for harassment, I suppose, the Lurkers. Well, I think Jonas is a pretty careful character, too. Like, we've seen him take a long time to win games because he didn't want to throw leads he had. I don't yeah. know how much of that's actually factoring into this, but I agree. Like, I think some more of the aggressive Zerg players and the more YOLO players out there would have just, like, Hydra, Hydra, hmm. wave, wave, keep using all your money and throwing it at Scarlet until uh, she's dead. Also... <sighs> I really, infestors are also such a good idea too, right? Like I, I just give a big spiel about how lurkers can potentially work. And I guess if they do go into high tempers really quickly, that's when oh, lurkers geez. are a little bit better than infestors because you can just feed back the infestors. But we don't have any high templars again. Really want to stress that. And infestors probably would have been a better overall unit here. In fact, he yeah. might regret not going for infestors. I, I love that she literally like quadrupled down on this strategy, by the way. And now the stasis trap <laughs> wall blocks out the attack. He could kill the rocks. I'm surprised he doesn't, to be honest. But, yeah, he was going for two different attacks, saw that on one side, doesn't want to go commit to the other. And Scarlet producing five oracles, excuse me, did I say quadruple? I mean quintupled down. Five oracles at a time being produced yeah. right now. Yeah. I was going to say, I, I saw that and I was like, I'm surprised she doesn't add on air weapons because she might go into carriers, but oh, just kidding. JK, nah, just oracles. more oracles. And they don't benefit yeah. from air weapons, guys. They just do Maybe a stupid not. amount of damage no matter what. Oh my god. <laughs> I'm You're right though, but this is this is actually legitimately where infestor territory comes into play. If you don't have a fungal to stop the oracles, you might just get out damaged. Yeah, and fungals are really a hard stop. The oracles done correctly. Look how many oracles there are. Mother of so God, many. eighteen. And she got some nice counter damage done. 
killing 21 drones. I think oh. he just won this game. This is where I want to be like, it's a nice race, but Jon Snow did not handle this correctly. And I think, to be honest, he underestimated the, the air part of this, I guess you could say. Yeah. She like miscontrolled the Oracle, so it looked ridiculous. And you're thinking like, ah, oh, she doesn't know what she's doing. I could just go with the Hydras, Lurkers, or whatever. But man, well, six, 17 Oracles have died. There's still 17 remaining. I think seeing the charge lots was just too big of a of a a point for Jon Snow to ignore. Like generally, if you're going to charge lots, you also go into High Templars and you're going back into the Ground Army. He must have really thought. She was going to go either into a ground army or into Tempest. But he never really had a lot of scouting. The oracles are taking care of everything. The charge lots are keeping him back at home. When he pushed out, that was like kind of the first scout he had in quite a few minutes. And I think obviously he knows how badly that went for him. And uh, still doesn't want to tap out yet, but his army isn't any better against mass oracles. Yeah, and for those asking Chad what happened with the drones, there was a Zealot run by. We kind of showed the tail end of this as we focused on the Oracle part of the attack, and that's where they got gutted here in the natural. So apologies for not showing that on camera. I think the Disco Ball of Death was worth pointing out, even though it made me throw up in my mouth a little bit. Yeah, it made Jon Snow feel bad too. So uh, again, I want to remark on the Infestors. We had kind of been harping on that up until that fight, and well, the Fungal... The damage itself is not what's really key. Keeping them balled up and out of range of the Hydras is. If you just simply move out of range, they surprise you, you get the fungal down, oh no. Move a little bit out of range. You kill so many oracles, you just can't do anything. Uh, and then also the occasional multi-chain fungal that pops a bunch of oracles is fun too. Uh, that would have been just amazing to have in the well, actual army fight. And there's other parts of it too where we've seen players like Bly, for example. They see Mass Oracle, he's gonna go like Corrupt or Muta. Things like this can work, uh, but Jon yeah. Snow sticking to the high just feels a little bit stubborn and, frankly, like a mistake. Yeah. And, you know, obviously his banelings are going to... Well, I guess they're going to help out against the 16 charge lots, which she still has uh, running around everywhere, but never really attacking with the main army. I just love that you need some, like, deep mind level of like, AI control to actually be able to transfuse to save any unit in this, because everything's just going to be, like, microseconds of death. Yeah. Uh, Zealot Rumble hits once again is to transfuse the queens because they're like a little bit easier they can take more than a microsecond of damage they can take two microseconds of damage yeah uh nice response to the, uh, the charge lots this time but scarlet's on five bases Jon snow never replaced his fifth he's he's maxed out but again on an army that isn't any better than what we just saw it, i mean i guess it has queens now with transfuses but i agree with you i don't think <laughs> i wonder how many transfuses are actually you know sent down there's some legitimacy here too, where, by the way, I, I know we talked about the Spire. Scarlet is actually so maxed out on 33 Oracles, she could not make a Phoenix to save her life. So right now, if Jon Snow had any sort of mutas, he would just crush. I know we're that talking about Infestors, like guys, but... <laughs> yeah, what layer? <laughs> okay, we got it. You know, what it's, you know what it is? It's the candy in the aisle with a cashier. You're like, eh, don't mind if I do. Grab, like, the Reese's Pieces or something like that. Oh, dear lord. <sighs> It just, it's so sad, because you see a max out army versus a max out army, and you must think that Jon Snow has a chance, but it's I really two, feel that in his best Oh my god. Ugh. And now a fleet beacon, and upgrades, so now she might go into something like Carriers or Tempest. No, I think she's only going for the fleet beacon to get maybe the Indian Pulse Crystals if they're Remutas. Maybe. This, oh my god, it's gonna be so dumb. 44 Hydras. Kill three Oracles. Four, five, six, okay. Queen's start getting some damage. Nope. <laughs> Chance One. lose. More like it. GG. <laughs> Scarlet ties up the series. One to one. What's that Oracle emote? There's gotta be one, right? Where's David Kim? Who do we blame for this? <laughs> Alright guys, let's get a couple of minutes of ads out of the way so we can hop into Game 3 ASAP. We'll see you in two minutes. I like to imagine we live in a world where Scarlet is the equivalent of a political activist in game and is trying to get mm -hmm. Oracles banned by proving how disgusting they can be. It's it's like trying to get gun control by committing a mass murder or something. Like it's just I can't Ooh. I know it's mm. recent topics, I probably shouldn't touch on that. That's my bad guys. I retract the statement immediately. But the point is still it's like just I don't think that's the case at all. I think Scarlet just wants wins, plain and simple. And she's enjoyed playing Protoss for a really long time. 
she has an affinity towards the oracles in the first place. To be clear, by the way, guys, I was making a reference that I could best think would equate to the situation, not considering what's happened recently, so I really am sorry and apologize for making that comment. Had nothing to do. I wasn't connecting the dots at all. But anyways, things are tied up one-to-one. -one. Let's talk about solutions to the Oracle after we get these intros done. In the top right, we got Sidestorm Gaming's Jon Snow. <laughs> the bottom left. That's the pink Ferdos. It is Scarlet, and I'm just resisting the urge to use all chat right now. To say, I think you misplaced your dictionary. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so we talked about during the course of the game, but if I'm going to give you guys some first-hand references here for things that look good, uh, I, I want to see Wardy cast this, so maybe it's on his channel or maybe it's on someone else's, but there was, uh, during WCS Montreal, Snoot versus Haas. This was not on the main stream, but everybody in the venue was actually crowded around the player area watching these guys play from their first-person points of view because there was no stream for us to watch for it. And Snoot played it not quite perfectly, but the best I've seen to deal with oracles. And again, while solutions include things like mutalisks and corruptors, I think good fungal growths are your core thing that destroys oracles. And as I'm going to point out many times during that game, especially if there's no High Templar in play, and there's no evidence that High Templar in play, you want to go in festers like 100% of the time. If you want to really get fancy, throw in some parasitic bombs with vipers. Why not? Get the abduct off. But for the most part, I think fungal growth is going to be your bread and butter. I agree. I, I, I can't... There must be reasons not to go for it. And I'm thinking along the lines of you saw game time go for like a hydro bust, which worked out really well and he executed it as fast as possible, but worked out less well when he was distracted and, and hold, held up. And one of the ways that he was held up in one of the games was because he added in lurkers, um, which which it doesn't sound like a big deal, but getting the lurker den and then waiting for the lurkers and then actually affording the lurkers, like that's a lot that could have gone into, yeah, basically infestors, which might not help out as much. Because um, it, it's just, yeah, the feedbacks exist and that might be the main reason people are like, no, infestors aren't the answer. But I still think they're the best answer overall, well, even if feedbacks are available, just be very, very careful to take the engagement. Right, but that, that goes right back to reading the room, reading the situation at hand. If you know for sure there's no High Templar, go on Festers. If you're maybe worried there are because you scouted a storm and Archon drop earlier, then I understand not doing it. But it's like, I feel Jon Snow guess... just got caught up with horse blinders or tunnel vision because it was just Hydras and more Hydras and more Hydras and more Hydras. Yeah, 100%. And we mentioned that in the, in the middle of that last game too. But I'm just kind of saying that I... I actually don't think it's a good enough reason. I know feedback is an amazing spell, and it's one of the reasons that late game PVZ is so difficult, you know, when you get into the, the mass well, carrier, tempest, storm thing, but I think you gotta try and work with spellcasters. Yo, know, what's cool about that too, by the way, uh, sorry, we should talk about what's going on here, but we'll finish up this point, guys. Um, We've actually been seeing some counterplay to that now, whether it's Sort of who set the standard for us on the channel, granted I know he wasn't the first player to ever do this, but Sort of like Neural Parasiting a, a Templar and feedbacking four other ones, like, there oh. are ways to play around it, you don't have to just be scared of it, granted it's still difficult to do and I'm not going to make it sound like it's easier than it is, but there are ways yeah. to do it. Yeah. But uh, again, to, to Johnso's credit, if that had been transitioned into uh, Charge Lot Archon, then the Lurkers might have just been the real kicker. The problem really was that he didn't know, uh, I think, that it was it was Mass Oracle. So he's going to be a little more on guard, perhaps, Jeez. this time. Okay, so as I say, one Void Ray is okay for clearing out the Overlords, especially if you're worried about Nidus Worms and stuff. Two's okay if you're worried about an attack. But she's going three Void Rays deep, and this is definitely unorthodox. And she's going to lose one, maybe? Uh, questionable control. Mass Void Rays aren't really a thing, but if you go for Void Rays and then get a Mothership Core, you can do the old Recall Runo. What's funny, though, is if you guys want to know what shuts down Void Rays, <laughs> Queens oh, and Fungals. Oh my god. Yeah, um, so if that was her plan, but I doubt she's going to try to do that Mass Void Ray. That would actually kind of be a trolley build. I think she's just going for four, maybe do the Recall thing, and then going into um, Tempest or Carriers. Sorry, there's a really weird sound I got to look into. My camera's going on yours. Oh, okay. Um, but uh, what she have to do? Three void rays. We'll see if she adds on more. She hasn't added on any other stargates, but it's clear intention is to go into more stargates with plus one on the way. And Jon Snow might have trouble scouting for this. You know, he might have to be thinking like, oh, I'll just continue. I'll, I'll be more on point about sending overseers in. But since all of his overlords are dying on the front lines and void rays are still kind of patrolling, that might be a little bit harder.
Uh, so double stargates are now put down. Um, I guess maybe I should talk about this in, in the actual uh, cast, but I'm a little too concerned about what this could be. The Void Rays do try and duck in, and I guess I don't need the recall to potentially get a snipe, but that's usually what you would see. And she is getting a fifth Void Ray, so that's where I'm kind of like, okay, maybe it is Mass Void Ray, I don't know. But they get a Gantrith or 87 for the 48 month resub. I'm starting to feel old. 40 months is a long time. Uh, I'm blowing. Sorry, Beck. Hi. Right. Yeah, while we have the law, I guess to explain, so first of all, Scarlet is in Canada. She's been in Canada since, uh, like, even before Montreal, WCS Montreal. So that's out of the way. She does not actually have a Korean visa, and there's no reason for her to stay in or go back to Korea to, to uphold that. She just uses a tourist visa, which lasts six months, and you can come and go as you please. So Korea doesn't really care. So it's really about her plans, what she wants for the future, which I think even she's a little still undecided about. Yeah. Um, sorry about that. I was just, they're, they're apparently spraying the side of my building with something and I don't know what or why, but I was like, did I leave the tub running or something? What does this rushing water sound like? Am I about to like <laughs> flood my apartment? Like I, I was so confused. So apologies for that guys. But, uh, well, we did say void rays on mass are not a thing. Scarlet is going to try and make it a thing. Yeah. Um, so you do combine, if we're going to go back to mass void rays when they were actually a thing, I think it's talking hard to the swarm. Basically you did add on charge out underneath. And they were definitely difficult to deal with, but people figured out how to deal with them, and that largely included investors, including Storm. And High Templars obviously isn't impossible. She's doing it right now. But that's when you start just getting into, you know, the other aspects of, of StarCraft, where you actually micro things and outposition your opponent and whatnot. So investors are definitely still the right choice here. Oh, boy. This is going to be funny to watch. Uh, just so everyone's fully aware, Void Rays with a mothership are usually what you have guarding your carriers come the late game. So there's actually a transition for these units if they find no use here and now due to just being scared of fungals or hydras or what have you. Um, they'll be very powerful later on, but Scarlet has invested into this. Like she's got the air upgrades. She's getting storm zealots with charge. It looks silly, but I really like what she's gone for. I'm going to hold off on whether or not I not whether or not well, I like it says uh this could easily just be one fungal into oblivion. But we'll see. Uh, Jon Snow might be the one that breaks down his rocks and her rocks once he realizes exactly what's going on. But I think we do have that same problem where he doesn't know exactly what's going on. Last he saw was, I think, four Void Rays, which could just be the Snipe Squad into carriers. Um, so, you know, the first time he pushes out is going to be the first time, I think, he sees, like, what? Mass Void Rays? Alrighty then. By the way, side note to all the people tuning in, it's really awesome to see the first North American 10 group had really good viewership. This one's not doing too bad either. Our North American viewership has historically been very low. So I just want to point out there, if, if we keep seeing numbers like this at these hours, we are more inclined to start producing more content for these time zones too. So mm -hmm. you guys who are just tuning in today, first off, again, I'm, I'm harping on this hard. Hit the follow button so you don't miss anything. That way you keep coming back and encourage us to maybe keep doing stuff at this hour. But we do have the attack commencing now. We got the burrowed infestors. There's about three fungals locked and loaded. While there's the danger of storms and feedbacks, I think Scarlet, she's actually the one in trouble here. Maybe. Hard to so, say. Uh, full surround. Storms are locked and loaded. Feedbacks go in the queens. This is kind of nice to see. Wasting storms on the first couple hides just to get transfused. The infestors don't have to fear feedbacks if there's no energy to feedback. And actually, target fires a lot of these temple are down. Now almost none remaining. The infestors can get in here pretty freely. Launches a fungal, but too many hydras died. Yeah, a uh, fungal needs to be complemented, of course. But Jon Snow is uh, still maybe taking out the third base. There are a lot of hydras that weren't where the fungal was. So and as the warriors come over here, they still need to be very careful. There is no detection. Oh, there is detection. So snipes on that, uh, but the Nexus goes down. The Hydras could try and just micro their best, maybe snipe a Void Ray or two on their way out before they die. And Jon Snow is the one that is going to remax faster. He's on five bases, 77 drones, and she's still, you know, I, well, I actually don't know what she's deciding to go into. She's making an Immortal, a Mothership core now, but no more Void Rays. So where we'll see seven more Stargates and Mass Oracle it up. Nah, it's Fleet Beacon, so probably heading towards things like Carriers. Maybe Tempest if she really wants to get wild and crazy. 
But yeah, the Templar were a definite thing that was missing in last game, issue one without them. This time around too, maybe a little bit more expensive and difficult to use than an Oracle, because they're not so A movie, but they're still very, very good units to have. Hmm. I'm wondering if they just know the Immortals. I mean, Immortals are just good units, but... Hmm. How does a, another large Hydra force, and there is a fungal oh. here. There it goes. I love the slow Bantleys connecting to those Zealots. They don't get a chance to charge in. Most of them die on arrival, but storms are blanketing the Hydras. Not a lot of mic around them. But most of the Void Rays go down, and it's so difficult for Scarlet to replace any of this. Jon Snow's on his way to victory with this game. In fact, there we go. GG. Now leading 2-1 mm. in this best of five. It's not over yet. He still has to lock down one more game to secure the series. Uh, but big thank you to Mr. Je Mr. Jerry Ellis. I thought that was Jelly Eris. I'm dyslexic, apparently. But thank you, Mr. Jerry Ellis, for that Twitch Prime sub. Appreciate it, dude. Uh, what is Matt for? Odyssey. Okay, no intro for this one, so we'll just rock and roll into it. Um, at this point, I still, okay, I've been checking, guys. I've been looking at Skype. I've been looking at email. I've been looking at Twitter DMs. There's just no word from Kelezer at this point. I know a lot of people want to speculate, like, oh, he's off partying for his birthday and this, that, and the other. Kelezer is actually a really responsible guy. He's normally here, like, 100% of the time we ever need him to be. The fact that he's MIA uh, is a little disappointing, but also very uncharacteristic of him. And I really don't think it was, if anything, he's legitimately just VPN locked out of China. And probably not because he's partying. Yeah, I'd say so. Ah, huh, but Scarlet trying to make another new meta, I suppose. The Oracle's worked out so well, but that's Void Rays. Not so much a thing. Well, can't time begins. Let's get into the game. Again, thank you guys for tuning in. You guys are still watching the Ting Open Season 4. Check out the Master Arena page if you haven't. Use the code TINGOPEN to add $1 to the prize pool. It won't cost you anything. That money comes from Maturino's pocket. But all right, where's the... There we go. The game scores, of course, as I just said. Match point for this young budding Protoss in the top left. It's Team Experts Scarlet. In the bottom right... As the Red Zerg, he is Jon Snow. Jon Snow. Just new. It's so, so cute that they got together in real life. Did John they Snow actually? Yeah, they're married. Oh, I didn't even know that. That's awesome. Ah. I don't know how she feels about Daenerys stepping in on her man, though. <laughs> she like Spoiler. comes back as a White Walker, like, stay away from him. <laughs> <laughs> I hope they do. Who knows what the future could bring? Well, uh, we had thrown our predictions out with the assumption Kelezer was here. Jon Snow now looking to be in a position to take first place in the group. I think even if Kelezer did show up, there's still a pretty decent chance that Jon Snow would have been one of the two that gets out of the group. I don't think Scarlet was the shoe in for me, at least. It was Kelezer in my mind. Yeah, Scarlet was basically a shoe in I would say. It really mattered if she off-raced and if Jon Snow was having a particularly good day. So, she's off-racing, I guess, and she's down 2-1, but... <laughs> I think she still makes it out. Well, of course, yeah, it will Jon be Snow a challenge. First. I was making jokes with Poke Bunny in chat, because he's really salty. He's like, man, I wish I got to play against Scarlet's Protoss. I probably could have won if that was the case. So I was just like, dude, just need to bait her into it, man. Tell her how much she sucks, and oh, you couldn't possibly beat even someone like me with Proto. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So she maybe, might be willing to admit it, though. Well, whether that'll be the case or not, or maybe it'll be a ZVT rematch, we'll find out as the group concludes with the next series. As again, with no showing from Kelezer, we're likely just going to have to walk him over twice. Uh, but of course, whether you are first or second, it doesn't matter entirely. There's going to be a little bit of seeding involved, sure, but also just by getting out of this round, getting to the round of 16, you're in the prize money for season four. Yeah. So that's pretty good. Stargate is on the way for Scarlet. What is Ooh. the prize? You know, it's pretty good, too. 34 months worth of subbing to the best channel in StarCraft 2. Thank you, Shroom5. And he uses our brand new Ace 10 emote in his, in his message. I actually love this thing. It's so cute. I had no idea whether people would like it or not, but I've been actually seeing it in other channels too. 
It is pretty cute. Daisyoid is actually a pretty good perpetrator for using it too. Big shout out to that guy. Mm -hmm. Oh, the uh... No shenanigans here. John's opening two games with an early pool. Last game was a regular macro one. But that's where there is. I can't believe she'll do it again. I, mean, I didn't actually see anything in that fight that was like, well, you know, if she changed one thing. That just seems like an overall bad composition. Well, as long as John Snow goes for Hydras, which I think he will. Give him ah, some. I'm gonna give us a mind I, game coaching chat right now. Really proud of myself. Yeah, I see that. I'm pretty sure she get pretty, you know, <laughs> he, he said he was gonna go Zerg. No, what I was saying is like, do it, do like what I did with Coca in the uh, Caster's Invitational. Just swap at the last second of the countdown. Like, I don't know Good. what happened. I guess we'll just play it out. <laughs> oh my God. All right, the Baneliness is almost done, and Jon Snow is this time going for a real Baneling bus. It's a word I used on Interloper, but it was like a couple Banelings. This is actually going to try and kill Scarlet, and it's definitely an all-in. One that she might be able to tell, again, with this Oracle, uh, maybe the lack of droning on the third base, or even if it just gotten into the main and seen how many lings are on the way. I, I don't think she saw it. No, that's a generous amount of Banelings coming down, too. Easily going to take down one of these walls. Maybe if she realizes now, she can warp in like a last second century. But even then, this is enough Banelings to tear down like the Cyber Core. He doesn't even have to go through the pylons, but he's going to. Yeah. Voider is going to make it this difficult to clean up. It can help tear down the Banelings, but they use themselves in the pylons anyways. It's a little more complicated to clean up all these Lings. Yeah, they're just going to dart through to the main. Now, the Voider being revealed is kind of a big deal, but oh. Bailing actually manages to get the pile out before he's got enough health to block. So three links get to the natural while the main base might be getting cleaned up. These are getting some kills down here. She doesn't have a lot of firepower left, but it's it's still more than what Jon Snow is bringing forth here. Just not a lot of links, not enough links flooded immediately. Uh, he is sneaking two bailings into the main base and might get a lot of probe kills there and might still be able to cancel the third. I I'd say he needs to if he's a macro game. He's heading in. We're, I know there's stuff going on down here, guys. We're going to see how many of these hit. What's the high score going to be? Scarlet is not paying attention. That's going to be nine. <laughs> nine probes. Oh, jeez. He, he needed that, but he still also needs to get this third base. That's very true. He's he's still not in a great spot. You know, down on 22 drones back on the other side of the field. It's unlikely he's going to kill many more. Scarlet's actually got that wall back up and running. And uh, we see the focus fire on the pylons because he knew the overcharge was coming, but no surround on that nexus. Nothing here dead just yet. Just zerglings. Um, Ooh, another whoa. bust. This gateway's eventually going to go down just a residual splash damage too, but Oracle's yeah. using the juice up in the natural so links get through to the main. Uh, man, if you could pick up that pylon and stop Stargate production, that'd probably be pretty nice too, but... The, the the beauty, the small upside to this for Jon Snow, while well, he's not getting ahead in workers, you know, Scarlet's using all of her energy defending, all of her cooldowns defending. Nothing's going across the map right now to cause him chaos at home, but I think he's fallen off for this point. I think it's too all in, and it's cost him too much. Yeah, there should be a tap out after maybe one more attempt at an all in. Uh, but he definitely hasn't done enough damage. She's continuing to make probes, and eventually he will have to decide to go for drones. And that's when the oracles do fly across the map with not much energy, but enough to, you know, pop a couple of the drones. Another attempt. And the oracles just pick these off if they want. Sit above them, wait for them Soon. to complete. Yeah. Well, going for the gateway is not a bad idea. It opens a much bigger hole on the wall, but yeah, as predicted, the one Oracle. I love that she doesn't even use all the energy. GG. In in the least expected way, we will go to an ace match, I suppose, here in the series, guys. But we're going to go to a quick commercial break before we do, so sit tight, and we'll see you for game five when we get back. All right, folks, it's game <laughs> number five. That's a hell of a thing to join into. Jon Snow asking if you can all in on this map. <laughs> uh, again, with things tied up two to two, you're watching the winner's match here in the North American group. Round of 32 for the Ting Open season four. In the bottom right, we have the Red Zerg player, Jon Snow. In the top left, as the pink Protoss, she is Scarlet. So here's the question for Mr. Poke Bunny, who is 
likely gonna get that walk over Kelozur. If you're in chat still, that is. Who are you who are you wanting to fight more? Because Jon Snow, I don't think, is much easier than Scarlet. Like these are two very tough opponents. So in your hmm. finals match, which of these two do you prefer? Jon Snow or Scarlet? Imagine he says Jon Snow. I think he actually is wins games against Jon Snow. I'm not sure about Scarlet. Well, I would almost just say Jon Snow based on the fact that the first series went the way it did, right? Not again, like I think Pokebunny did a lot of right things, but Scarlet just really played well. And sometimes yeah, it's did. just hard it's just hard to beat a good player who's playing well. Mm. He asked the same question on Mac Depot, by the way. She's like getting Senpai's knowledge base of Zerg. Well, she's still Protoss, I guess. Uh, Poke Bunny, by the way, says Scarlet's Protoss greater than Jon Snow, greater than Scarlet's Zerg. <laughs> okay, that's fair. So he said he'd rather fight Scarlet as Protoss, given the opportunity. And if that's not an option, then Jon Snow. I don't imagine she would give him the opportunity, but it'd be funny if she did. <laughs> yeah, right? Um, now, unfortunately, she would have to stick with whatever race she chooses, so it would be quite a big decision to make. Ooh, by the way, piggybacking off of this morning's broadcast, guys, we're now at a grand total of 396 follows for the day. Again, our previous highest follow was like 200 and something, so we've already smashed it out of the water, but yo, can we get over 400? Can y'all hit that follow button? Because 396, that's damn nice. That'd be cool. Uh, we have a robo opener from Scarlet, so something interesting happening as opposed to the regular old Stargate in a position to be very obviously scouted too. I think mm, I like the idea of anything that is immortal based. It's got good health, it's got good shields, it's got good damage. She's upset they killed the probe. That was rude. He didn't even right. he didn't even ask. But my problem is like watching Scarlet's follow up. It's funny watching her go air, and we kind of laugh about it, right? Like the Void Rays, the Oracles. It's laughable, but those are units that don't require, I think, a lot of control. I think you see an Immortal, you pair that up with the War Prism, you get the perfect pickup drop micro. That's when that unit really excels. And I'm not saying Scarlet can't do that, but we haven't seen her display any really awesome micro tricks this whole series so far. When does Zerg have to micro? Honestly. When they're playing Protoss. <laughs> uh, no, actually, uh, a little more seriously, the micro that is involved between the races is a little bit different. When you get down to, like, you know, actual War Prism, I was going to say in control micro, like, why? Uh, immortal is, micro. Is that, is that a shot fired? I don't even know. <laughs> no, I just in control immortal. I don't know what I was thinking. Anyways, the immortal micro with War Prisms is a little different than, like, for instance, splitting your lings against, like, a Widow Mine or target fighting with your mutas. It's just different, though. It's not, you know, less or greater than. Uh, but we'll, we'll get to see it. You get a good old tree to just a charge that immortal all in. Nice. By the way, it looks like that follow bait totally worked. 406 follows. You guys nailed it. Good job, team. We are now at 93,658 followers at the time of me saying this. That's a pretty big number. It's a pretty good. Well, Jon Snow is going to try and take care of this with a Roach Warren, but I think what he really would want is a is a Baneling Nest. Um, yeah, I'm going to go with a Baneling Nest would have been better. Well, it also would have I, been more appropriately timed. Well, plus the fact that like Immortals are just like hard countering what he's going for makes me a little uneasy, but I guess with Queens mm -hmm. and Lings in the front lines, those will soak the hits, ideally, or at least help sustain the Roaches. Mm, certainly if you get Ravagers, that would help. But uh, I'm quite worried about these charge lots slicing and dicing through even the buffer roaches. There's just not a lot of them. <laughs> She's kind of created this like failing surround the immortal too. Like just not letting it get touched by anything. But there's that pickup micro. So we're already going to see a little bit of this. Again, guys, we were really wondering like, could she pull this off? Mm -hmm. Hasn't had to yet. The war prison wasn't even close to getting hit by the curse of bile. Johnso desperately holding on to the natural base. Looks like she's going to try and go to, to the third. No, there are spine crawlers over here, and the army didn't react very Ooh. quickly at all. I like this, though. She wants the army to come north. She says, please come deal with me killing your third while she warps in out of vision of Jon Snow. Charge Ooh. lots to the main. Yeah. It's just, we I don't think it's a really easy response to this, but if Jon Snow can get to, like, super high Roach and Ravager numbers, 
maybe he'll just have enough to, you know, brute force it. Yeah, so I just want to put this out there, guys. We've seen Neeb win games against Koreans, just going charge lots only. Like, no Immortals, no Adepts, no nothing else. So, like, it's mm. possible Scarlet snowballs this really badly, but she's not quite done it yet. Yeah. Um, well, Johnson was adding on a lair. Unfortunately, he did lose that third base, so the options to continue, like, droning or uh, spanning to a fourth or even adding on any more tech, like an infestation bit or a bailing nest, it might be a little out of the question. So Scarlet is actually taking a lead here in supply, which doesn't bode too well. Also committing all of her forces to a front attack if Johnso has those roaches in the main base. Wouldn't be too hot. Uh, now I'm kind of seeing why the roaches are over bailings. Because if you're thinking about this, you're probably thinking about sentries. You're probably thinking I need a way to break those force fields. And ravagers are great. Not to mention they'd be able to help pick off things like this warp prism that have been chilling here this whole time. But yeah. only one Ravager ever got made. Certainly, I mean, Immortal Sentry, right? That's the usual combo. Immortal Charge is a little bit different. But yeah, I think the Banelings, they, they would, they're good at, like, Snowball Stoppers. If you have them prepared and ready to go when you hit them as they're warping in, more power to you. But yeah, when it comes to actually making them during an attack, I think more often we see Zerg players just eventually not be able to make enough, not quick enough anyways, as the Charge Lots come in. So the Roaches end up working fine. Not... Fantastic, as it's two base to two base right now, but fine. Oh, uh, it's a double Stargates. Uh, she's committed a lot of charge lots to this. That's a lot of minerals. And that third base is going to take a while for her to finish because both of her usual thirds were taken up by the creep spread. But that does leave all of the gases that she's taken to go into... Oracles? Question mark? Maybe Void Rays. I mean, with Scarlet, I want to lean towards Oracles, but Voidrays would make more sense because it's Roaches. But also, again, Oracles are just Oracles. Um, yeah. Weird base. I mean, forced out of the creep. No anti-air, so still with no <laughs> no Voidrays, no way to push these off. That's kind of annoying. Yeah. So you just walk would... like one stalker or something. <laughs> I expect she doesn't want to show she's going Oracles. So far, she's been able to hide it. Mm. Yeah. Well, uh, big thank you to Shadow Be Me for the six month resubs. Says, love you guys. Keep up the good work. You too. Thanks for coming back to the channel. You do your good life, good sir. Live your best life. Uh, so, Void Ray is going to be the anti air to start pushing these off. Way so good. Um, you want to get banned again? <laughs> <laughs> I banned so many of our mods before stream today, it felt bad. I've never had to purge so many scum from our channel before. I really, really hoped you knew I was vanilla when I did that. I didn't. Oh, I, just, I saw you did that. I, <laughs> were, you, who's, were you the one trying? Who was drawing for that chariot? I was so pissed. I was so triggered. That was me. Yeah, I made Dominus. Ah, oh, God. I knew what the word was, <laughs> too. And the thing is, I know you could see my guesses. You saw how close I was getting. Yeah. <laughs> It's great. Everyone's uh, making fun of you and the guys who got it correct chat. Yeah, probably. Pictionary's mean, dude. Alright, so the oracles en route are not here yet. The nice thing though is when they do finally get here, they pierce through most of the armor of these roaches. But this one void ray, one more cross of bile takes it out. Until then, it's doing a lot of damage to the roaches. Base, Base goes trade. down. All of her charge lots and that immortal and the warp prism went across the map. These roaches selling out the main base from being destroyed are quite clever. And unfortunately, she will not be able to retrieve all these zealots when the roaches come back home. Matt D, thank you for the 31 months, by the way, dude. Doing jokes here don't work due to the time lag. What? No delay today. Let's talk about the delay. Oh. Yeah, we don't often so. get the stream with no delay, but when we got players we trust and we've worked with for years, the rare opportunities, we'll see them when we can. I think Scarlet has lost this game, by the way. <laughs> um, maybe if all those charge outs were at home and she saves all the oracles and the void rays, I, I don't know, but splitting up like that led to not so way so good things. It, uh, it was even Shut like nicely handled by Jon Snow with the two roaches holding off the charge lots. Like, yeah, it didn't go so well. Well, and then Roaches just can't shoot up. There's no Ravagers, so... Oracle's gonna use all of the energy to potentially take out... Oh, 
all of the roaches. Most of them are out that of works. juice. That's the scary thing about this. But some of these roaches are so low that void air comes in and should clean house. But I'm kind of on team. I'm on team throw so right bad. now. Not like I'm not in favor of Jon Snow. I'm not in favor of Scarlet because you can both make really dumb mistakes that could lose this game. But I think right I... now Scarlet having held on to this, despite it being only two bases, that energy comes back. She's good to go. I am now on team Scarlet. Uh, had, had Jon Snow obviously, he, you know, hindsight twenty twenty. You know if Jon Snow had just taken down the third base and ran like hell, he probably still has a decent position. But losing literally all of his army with no way of dealing with the oracles back at home. Uh... Does being on Team Scarlet require being wishy-washy? Because if so, then you nailed it. <laughs> yeah, it does. She's the most wishy-washy. Flip, flippy floppy, I flippity just, flop. I scarleted that call. <laughs> <laughs> if you guys don't know what we're talking about, Scarlet uh, is a very fun person to watch games with. She has very strong opinions that change frequently about how the course of the game is going. Yeah, exactly. Oh, but that was just, that was a ton of, uh, I mean, of course Roach is ah. inflate supply, but he was up actually like 70 supply. So this is where it gets maybe a little interesting, right? A couple of infestors are not going to deal with this right away. In fact, these are spawning in the exact wrong location. But you pair this up with a corrosive bile, that's better than the Hydras in terms of burst damage for taking these down. So you land the Fungal, three Crows of Biles, everything in the sky dies, and then we flippy flop our way back to Team Jon Snow. <laughs> Maybe. Like, I, I'm trying to think, as I keep saying, it's like a bunny going hippity hop, but we're going flippity flop. <laughs> Just rolling around on the ground, flailing our arms as we go back and forth from one <laughs> side to the other. <laughs> oh, God. I, uh, I don't know. I'm gonna stop calling the game now. I mean, that supply difference is pretty extreme, but as it is, if Scarlet gets to a fourth base, um, you know, gets a high Templars, I think that she, you know, is fine. But Jon Snow, uh, I guess equal, equal kind of ways. If he gets a good fungal, if he gets maybe up to, I don't know why he's gonna, I don't know, I don't want to say he's gonna go for Greater Spire, but the timing on the Hive and the Spire is awfully suspicious. I don't think it's for Greater Spire. I think at bare minimum, it's like he's thinking about the Oracles right now, and he doesn't want to lose everything to them. So, Mutas, uh -oh. Corruptors, you name it, just something, anything. It just is the timing usually when you see that those put together. So maybe he is planning on just getting some corruptors and then also some vipers. Well, uh, the thing that makes it so weird is I don't see a big need to dedicate to air when you know they had void rays, you know they had stargates. Mm. Like if you knew there's archons and immortals, you think of rude lords for sure. But when you know there's oh, already yeah. a bunch of stargates in production, do you still go air? And I think only in desperation you do this. So this this spire might not have anything to do with what he wants to do, but has a precautionary tale. Maybe. I mean, frankly, Rulers would be bad and Corruptors would be bad, I think. I wouldn't even mind Ultralisks. With this many Queens to power them up, that's like infinite transfuses. Nah. Nah. Now with Voyager's nah. and Oracles that just, that just don't care about armor. Nah. Nah. I don't, like, I don't care he's getting it, man. I'm just going to keep saying nah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, like, I, I like, um, <laughs> what, yeah, I'm not gonna, like, nitpick here, but one of my favorite comments that I, I think I remember reading from that stupid thread from the other day was, like, I really like Zombiera because she rarely calls the game early and stuff like that, and I feel like this game has just True. been the anti, the anti, the anti grub. <laughs> no way, so I, I called that one early, but I'm gonna, I'm telling it right now, but, okay. <laughs> I'm going full I, pro gamer mode right now. <laughs> no, I'm, I'm with you on this though, because for those who don't know, oracles, they, they don't, armor doesn't affect them. It's a spell damage, so they're still melting through ultralisks. Void rays, prismatically aligned, don't care about ultralisks either. But I do believe there's this degree of like, if the transfuses are on point, you probably out sustain the damage. Uh, if you land that fungal oh. while everything's clumped up on your or ultralisk, throw in that corrosive bile. Like, I'm not saying this will happen, and it's honestly going to require a perfect situation. But I see a lot of cool potential for Jon Snow. The reason that I'm so against Ultras is actually a bunch of other factors besides the literal Ultras. Jon Snow has not been on a great economy for a long time. Neither has Scarlet, but she has a ton of gas stored for what I would say is stronger units with gas. Feedbacks and storms, please. So Jon Snow getting to Hive and giving so many options to himself is great if he's on 75 drones and five, six bases this entire time. I'm not so sure about how this game has gone, but this is a wise decision. He's obviously having trouble getting above a certain number of supply. His upgrades might be baller because she doesn't have any. <laughs> She's getting one one right now. But when it actually comes to to like what who is getting to the better late game faster, I think it's Scarlet. 
Well, this is going to be a hell of a game five. There's no doubt about it at this point, no matter how this ends. Um, people still asking about Kelzer in chat, and again, to address, Kelzer has basically until this series, plus the commercials after it are done, to figure his stuff out, but I really do not believe we're going to see him today, as we have had no word from him all day. Yeah. So, Kelzer fans, don't get your hopes up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I just love that in in most other scenarios, ultras are actually not a terrible choice. But in this game, <laughs> I do oh. really like Neural Parasite. Me That's too. This could be. I'm actually really curious about Neural Parasite. Uh, do you grab the mothership with this just to take away their cloaking? Are you looking to grab the Archons for some damage? Feedback uh, through through neural and the Templar. I mean, there's a lot of what ifs for this, but Scarlet's making a lot of stargates behind this, and I don't actually like that she's doing this. I don't think she has the gas income to support what is going to be like five stargates production if she loses anything. Well, she might. She's she's getting to fifth a fifth base right now. Stasis traps all over the map to see where the army is coming from, and of course, stop there. it as well. I, I think queens. she's gonna this yeah. so the real trick about using the queens though right is that scarlet i don't think she'll ever she'll never want to, none of them should ever want to push into each other but if john Sos thinks that he has to the queens can't come along not very well, easily <laughs> you know what i like uh, not that this is where he's going with it but i like this idea where if he makes like 14 overseers with this and the queens that scarlet literally can't target the infestors just because there's too many other energy based units around them that would be misclicked for the fun uh the feedbacks he should he should make like twenty overseers. Ooh, that sexy sound coming in for a donation from Darren Krakowski. Thank you for the five dollars and ninety one cents. Pro tip. <laughs> Darren Krakowski. <laughs> Son of Mike Krakowski. <laughs> Just the tip. Thank you kindly, dude. Uh, so while this is going on, by the Johnson has been like running around with these lings. He's trying to trigger a lot of these traps. I know he was using um, Corrosive Biles to eat one or two of them as well. It's silly, but it's kind of working because his units can't be killed while they're chilling. And by the time they escape, they just barely run to the next one in time to get trapped again. <laughs> Bit trolling. Uh, so, <clears throat> by the way, Johnson has gotten to like a huge bank on five, six bases and a plus 70 drones. So he's in that... This is looking actually like a very oh, he typical PvZ. He actually did it! Oh, he's a bloody fucking genius! I'm sorry, I love this move. <laughs> well, six overseers to both, you know, make feedbacking problematic, but also to make sure they don't die and he can't see past the mothership. Yeah, I, I mean, they were going to be a necessary part of the army. I don't think he was making it just to do it, but that's what I was saying. The benefit would be, you've got like 19 queens, seven overseers, like, good luck clicking the burrowed infestors that are below all of this, <laughs> stacked up so perfectly. Hmm. Well, this should be her time to shine, uh, having played against this style uh, many times with her Zerg. I'm sure she knows what's going to be bothersome, and that's probably why she laid down so many stasis traps. You know, oh, Ultralisks no have been under debate for this a little bit, um, in terms of them versus stasis traps. For those who don't know, Ultralisks will not trigger the traps, but they're not affected by them. So... Yeah, they can run in here and kill them, but really they should trigger them and just be immune to their effects. So you shouldn't have to like actually stop to attack them. Oh! Oh! oh. Can he follow up? Can he follow up? No, okay. Feedback's a little too dangerous. Recall's out of there. Uh, that was a good choice. She does recall to the closest mothership, and some of them survived. Uh, Ooh. interesting choice to neural the carrier that didn't actually end up being that effective at all. Oracle's coming no, in, transfuse is going down left and right, but uh, the ultralists below this are getting melted. Queen's starting to die on the backside of this too, but keep in mind, Queen's are just kind of whatever supply, and they're actually taking out the Oracle. So with those transfuses, sustains the damage. Ultralists are the only thing not caught in a stasis, which is the only reason they're dying. <laughs> <laughs> right. Uh, obviously, the biggest problem right there was the High Templars all having to be taken out of the fight almost entirely. That was a huge, huge problem, and Jon Snow pounced and capitalized, and now has a lead up for the yeah. army supply. All of his upgrades are looking quite good. I mean, we take a look at what he lost here. The ultras were a little bit costly, and so were the infestors. That much sucks. But nine queens to trade out for most of the anti-air from Scarlet, or not anti-air, I... just air in general. I mean, these are mineral-based units Jon Snow does not care about anymore. If you take the units lost, I love that Scarlet has a hanging units lost tab. I know, because it's just a little bit of everything. Wait. Oh, John still lost interceptors because he neural parasited one of them. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I was about to say, what the heck, too? I noticed that as well. <laughs> 
Oh god, she needs to wait for oh. Storm. She just showed a weakness by pushing out like that. I he might regret it. Void Rays are in overcharge oh, mode, and the Corruptors are not backing away. He wanted to fight, thought Transfuse could outlast the damage, but that's not the case. Corruptors go down, but the Ultralis also force all this Templar into Archons slash death. Yeah, this is why Ultras are good, by the way. Like, they're actually okay to have super late game when you have that bank, when you're taking these huge fights, is that they might get underneath and kill some of the High Templar. Now, one thing I'm a little worried about, Jon Snow had a wonderful bank, but he's used it up already. He hasn't broken Scarlet yet, but her Tear. army supply is also not recovering as fast as his. Well, he just remade a bunch of Ultras, thinking, I guess, primarily about the High Templars again, or maybe just, you know, that's what he automatically pressed, but he probably shouldn't have. <laughs> Uh, now remaking all those queens and trying to get some more infestors, but he had a uh, problem with anti-air. Queens still gonna be really effective. Just again, mineral-based units when you're trading up for gas-based units this late in the game. Resources lost also surprisingly close too. And taking a quick look at the income graph, it has been Jon Snow's money game for the last while too. Yeah. Mm, if you have enough cannons, notice. it can stop the ultras. Oh. But ooh, nice recall. Well, I didn't like that she was pushing on a creep, so and she was pushing kind of far. I guess that's that's a better move. But yeah, she's having a lot of trouble getting to a, a good army supply again. Still down thirty, but her army is strong. So, so she can take. Where are we flipping flopping right now? Whose team are we on? Mm, I'm still a little bit on Scarlet's team, but John So getting that momentum was huge. Killing all those High Templar was really big. And stopping another base from going up potentially. Even if this actually doesn't kill the Nexus, this is going to finish with very little health. So a Ling run by, for example, could do a quick snipe Ooh. and shut down her income. In fact, Scarlet just hasn't remade any High Templars at all recently. That Ooh. is a problem. I mean, six Archons is nice. I'm not going to pretend like it's not. And oh, she's got the uh, poke money problem with the tumors. <laughs> <laughs> That's a little bit awkward. It took me a second. I was like, poke money problem. Is the skin weird? Like, what's happening? Does he have weird skin? What are you, what are you trying to say right now? <laughs> No, I thought I meant like, you, were, you were zooming in the Archons. I didn't see the creep tumor, so I was like, I don't remember oh. his Pokemon using any in-game skins. <laughs> the odd amount of, uh, oh, in-game skins. I thought you meant like he's got a real-life problem. <laughs> I was like, that's fucking mean, dude. Like, what's wrong with you? That would be a really weird thing for me to notice and say. <laughs> well, anyways, the uh, yeah, the creep over here is a little bit nice for Jon Snow, but nothing he can really take advantage of. No bailing speed! But bailings were such a small part of the game, not surprising. Just weird to not see. <laughs> Slow bailings do connect to probes, though. Ooh. Ooh. Walk for your life. <laughs> it's the slow bailings. A uh, lot of infestors, though, guys, for round two. He was on six before. Now he's up to ten. He's got a couple vipers with this as well. So whether they're going to be for abducts, maybe a parasitic bomb sprinkled on top of the anti-air. I like Jon Snow's army a lot, and while they're close in army supply, I don't actually feel they're that close in type of supply. I think the casters are going to win this out, and the fact that Scarlet did not make a bunch of temples. She's now warping some in. This is looking a little bit better, but the fact that she didn't warp a bunch in, these don't have two storms each. They're barely going to have enough energy for one. The casters and the fans will win out in this one, Rifkin. <laughs> Wink! Not even right. mad. So proud right now. <laughs> Um, all right, so uh, again, going back to that High Templar problem, you know, she never was really able to big bank or really kind of set the the pace of the game. She was starting to like all those stasis traps and, and just like the very scary army. But I'm thinking right now, a huge missing part of this game for her is harassment. Uh, she has a single think, zealot now seeing that the bases have been taken. Do you think Scarlet has really annoying roommates? Because right now she's just part of the big bank theory. I get, I get where you're going with that one, but I was like, I don't know, are parents annoying? <laughs> Man, I hate when people do that too. They like call their parents their roommates. I'm like, you're too cool to say you're living with your parents? Like, come on. It's 2017, I... a lot of people have their parents now. Yeah, yeah. A um, couple of uh, run buys actually happened for both parties. Lings barely don't get that Nexus Chrono with. 44 health. That's bad luck in Chinese, guys. Double four is not the number you want to see. And for Scarlet, who is so adored by China, they are probably sweating crazy watching this game for her. <laughs> uh, now she is starting to include these Zealot run buys, but unfortunately it's not too strong, not really catching Jon Snow out of position unawares. Yo, know, a lot of people are not responding well to the joke I made. My biggest disappointment was not queuing up a laugh track to go in tandem with it. Yeah, you should have had that ready to go if you're going to make a big bang.
Big bang the show joke. is so bad. It's like guy walks in the room. Like I love my favorite thing is people who make the mock scripts for the Big Bang Theory. So it's like Sheldon walks into the room, says hello, crowd starts laughing. Leonard responds with "Hi." Crowd laughs even louder, and like it just gets snowballed so quickly. And that's exactly I'm, what happens. It's so fucking terrible. I can imagine a scene where that Lily is what happens. Right? They had an awkward engagement earlier, and that's exactly. What how they enter and say hi to each other. That's I'm just gonna add a laugh track to our soundboard. So like while we're talking about the game, well, they don't sound like the Tastosis announcers, and those actually don't sound very good. <laughs> oh, <laughs> yeah. Um, hey, we have a maxed out army for both both players here. Scarlet continuing to expand is accruing some type of bank, but Chanson obviously with a much bigger one. She has the bigger army supply. She lost you those know, probes and didn't really remake them. This is a real concrete problem where if Jon Snow were to not fungal a single unit, but just Neural Parasite with 10 units, he would actually take out a fourth of Scarlet's supply because she's gotten into these really big supply expensive units. Eight Void Rays, five Carriers, seven Archons. Like, th there's actually just not a lot of actual units despite her supply count. <laughs> so Neural Parasite could just remove the, the units from the game? Oh, oh that recall that, deny was sick! That, that was weird. That that, okay, yeah, all right. Well, more neural parasites coming down, but a lot of backs and storms and feedbacks and storms. And more feedbacks on top of it. But he holds on to this carrier count. Uh, the void rays in turn are just shooting at the way the corrupt, uh, excuse me, the corruptors, but the corruptor numbers are a little too high, even with their extra damage. Uh, the corruptors do fall back. Jon Snow, though, with 5,000 minerals in the bank, I think it'd remax some pure laying and still be in an okay spot. But he's gonna make ultralists to go with this, too. Well, he did just use up all of his gas, so ultras are the only and gas he's going to have. And queens, you're right, but I'm, I'm thinking more importantly, like, he hasn't remade Viper, Festers, uh, Corruptors. Well, he still has nine Corruptors, but still. Um, that That's where I'm looking and seeing a worse army now for Jon Snow. That Remax is maybe a little bit too hasty. He loses a base, and she just goes on to one that's a little bit safer to, to knock out. Doesn't overstay or welcome or push too deep after taking that out. Uh, oh, just oh, yeah, takes the base down too. here, though. Yeah, but this is this is a scary point in time. You know, he just remaxed, he used up all that gas bank, so killing the hatcheries, yeah, you can replace them, but that's six gas geysers that won't be used Ooh. for some time. I don't know if that's worth it. He dived in really deep for the mothership, and it's nice to remove the cloaking element from play, but now he's got to fall back again. Scarlet might be able to remake a mothership if she really wants to play the waiting game, but I think for her, she knows she's got to keep pushing, she's got to keep the momentum rolling, and taking giving Jon Snow time to recover is like the most dangerous thing she could do right now. Well, I think there is no recovery. Without the gas, he just can't get the same type of uh, composition. There we go. That's well, That is, was so scary. He's on plus three melee. He's got adrenal glands. I think at this point, you just start thinking about base trades, right? Like, just run across the map. There's really not that many mm -hmm. cannons. I think he tears down the Nexus way faster than Scarlet tears him down. If he had got on this a little bit sooner, but he gets on the uh, trade train a little bit late. Not that many links, and she would have a recall if she was really scared of a base trade going in his favor. Well, the Ultras and Queens are going to do the best they can to hold it home, but it doesn't look like it's going to be enough. Immortals tear through the Ultralisks. Forget the Void Rays, forget the Archons. Everything here deals well with what Jon Snow has. That it does. Scarlet, I think, will just still be taken first place despite Jon Snow and his best efforts. GG. GG. Oy vey. Scarlet, first in the group, moves on to the round of 16. She joins the likes of Neeb and Masa. Uh, we should note too, by the way, guys, well, none of the round of 16 groups are locked in because we didn't know the players that would advance and we wanted to make sure we accommodate their schedules. The round of 16 group will not be happening until at least everyone's back from Kings of the North, which will be, as Zombie pointing out, happening this weekend. So pretty much all of our players competing in it. Um, we don't have a date for the round of 16 locked in, but we are looking for some time before BlizzCon. We just don't know exactly when yet. But yeah, Kelliser's not here. We will officially give him till the ad break is done. But we'll get Vito started with the other players just in case. So we're not held up waiting for too long. And uh, again, thank you guys for watching today. We must go to some sponsored content now. But when we come back, it'll be Poke Funny versus Jon Snow. And apparently Poke Bunny has actually been winning games off Jon Snow recently. Ooh, the bit cheer worked! It's so nice when that actually happens! Dove and Wolf! Coming in with a couple of muxies, cheering for Scarlet's victory. But excuse me as we go to some sponsored content from Ting. For those who don't know what Ting is, it's a mobile phone service only available in the United States. 
Uh, they help you save some money for your phone bill. If, if you are the person type of person who you don't call and text every day, you are on Wi-Fi more often than not, you can pay like as low as 10 to like 15 bucks a month for your phone bill. Might save you a lot of money. But to be clear, if you're somebody who uses a lot of data, you require an unlimited plan, Ting is not going to be for you. Regardless, even if it's not, there's still stuff in their store you can buy for a $25 credit off if you go to bttv.ting.com. But before we go to ads, one last shout out would be to check out the Matcharino page for this and use the code TINGOPEN to add $1 to the prize pool. And on top of this, with t-shirts and SIM cards available through the rewards section, 100% of that stuff is going to the prize pool, guys. You buy a t-shirt for 20 bucks, Ting's not pocketing 4 bucks and making profit, 20 bucks is going to the prize pool for a $20 t-shirt. They're really cool about this. But anyways, enough. We'll get to the commercials and we'll see you guys in a bit.